Do you... Do you think I should tell them? Do, do you think... Do you think they know? Do you... Do you think... Do you think I should? Oh, I... I... Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Got it. Got it. It's a cannibal movie. Just, uh... Just getting that out of the way. Um... I'm John Stark for MacMovieGuy.com, and this is a review of Bones and All. There was nobody over there. That was... Uh, that was me acting. I hope you love my acting. I'm a blind film critic, so I wouldn't have actually gotten visual cues from anybody anyway. Um, that was all just for show. It's all just the Hollywood magic on my completely lo-fi um, camera and me sitting here talking program of a review of Bones and All. <laughs> That was what you got. Um, yeah. So, uh, I saw this. And I saw it when I didn't need to because it wasn't nominated for anything. Which is actually quite a shame. I'm really surprised I'm saying that. <laughs> you have no idea how much this movie surprised me. First of all, um, I'm not like a massive fan of Luca Guadagnino as a director. Like... Call Me By Your Name was not my favorite film. It was okay. Uh, I think it was a little bit overhyped. I think people were like, oh my god, a gay movie with Timothy Chalamet. And I was cool. Dial it down. Let's actually, let's look at this for what it is. All right. Um, maybe let's ju not just immediately get excited about representation and, and make sure that the representation for the community is actually worth it. Uh, you know, for me, um, I, there was nothing about Call Me By Your Name that spoke to me. I was, I was, I was like, oh my god, Army Hammer, he's so hot. <laughs> I totally understand. I was like, oh my god, Timothy Chalamet, <laughs> you get that peach girl. <laughs> um, none of that. So, um, I hadn't seen Suspiria, so I didn't really know that we needed to remake Dar Dario Argento's Suspiria, and I think it was... A bold choice for Luca Guadagnino to want to remake Dario Gento's work. Um, I did see Luca Guadagnino's HBO series, and that was all right. So, but this is by far the best thing he's done, and that's weird because I was really uncomfortable going into this about watching a cannibal movie. I went, I even went on to IMDb, looked up the parents' guide, looked up the violence and gore, and I was like, oof. <sighs> all right I can do this um and uh so I knew what I was getting myself into and it is um I gotta say that like and I've I've told a lot of people this that I since I lost my vision I've seen a lot of films I never would have seen had I been able to see I would have passed on this if I could see screener or no screener, or I, if I could have been invited to a screening where the entire cast was there and I would have passed on this. Um, there's not a part of me that would have wanted to see this um, visually, um, which is kind of a shame because, yeah, I mean, the cannibal aspect of it makes me queasy, and that's why I'm upfront about it, because it's going to make a lot of people queasy. But if you can get around it, or if you're part of the blind community, you know, there are things that when they're described to us, um, the description really isn't that bad. I will say that the sound design here is is eerily effective. Um, you can hear just, it wants what it wants you to hear. It wants you to hear the gross out um, tearing of flesh in certain scenes and um, the, the, the devouring of flesh. Uh, you know, it, it wants you to hear that. And it's, uh, the sound design and sound mixing this year should have represented Bones at all. Um, because uh, it, it does exactly what it set out, what it, what it, it, what it is setting out to do, which is to make you obviously uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> I don't think, I, I think that's, it's very intentional sound design. Um, but, uh, other than the cannibal thing, people keep calling this, you know, like a love story about, you know, people who are just, 
uh, outsiders. I've heard people talk about Twilight. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Taylor Russell plays uh, the lead character here. She's a young girl, uh, apparently just turned 18, who um, uh, kind of has an incident. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to spoil everything. She has an incident that requires her to need to move um, <laughs> and uh, change up her life. And then she's kind of just uh, a hobo from that point on. She just kind of like drifts um, from place to place. And uh, she's she doesn't really know what, what's going on with her life. I mean, uh, what she is. And then she, all of a sudden she kind of finds this guy, uh, Sully, played by Mark Rylance, who is creepily amazingly effective in this film um he is actually well-rounded uh more well-rounded than you would think in this film it's actually a really great performance from mark rylance who also gave a great performance this past year in the outfit um mark rylance gave two performances last year that we probably should have found some way of awarding him for but um yeah, he's this really old, um, I can't, there's a, he's doing a voice that really reminds me of something, but I can't, I have not been able to pin down what it is, um, what he sounds like to me. There's something in pop culture that his voice really reminds me of, um, but he's got this voice and he talks about himself in the third person a lot. He's like, you have to abide by Sully's rules. <laughs> and uh, he kind of lays it out for... He's the expository dump in the film. Which is one of the reasons I didn't like the film. Is because Sully seemed to exist in the beginning as a... These are the rules. This is the life. This is what we do. This is how they exist. This is what you're able to do. And then Taylor Russell kind of like moves on from him. And it seemed like his whole purpose in life was to just explain the world to us, like the world that Bones and all exists in. Um, which was kind of a waste of his character because his character was actually really interesting. Um, it's hard to say that any of these characters are likable because at some point you will watch... It doesn't really matter... Uh, who, which one of these characters you end up liking. If you find um, Mark Rylance, you know, like, let's say that you watch him in the beginning, and uh, you're like, oh, this seems like a nice older guy. He's going to eat somebody. If you're checking out Taylor Russell in the beginning, you're like, oh, she's just a misunderstand teenager. She's going to eat somebody. <laughs> if you're a big Timothy Chalamet fan later on, He's going to eat somebody. <laughs> these are things that are going to challenge how much you really like these characters or really like these actors. Um, it depends on where you stand with cannibal films, which is sort of like one of the last, uh, I don't know, um, wild, <laughs> the, the last Wild West vert of the Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? Like the last sort of, uncharted territories where we just have kind of left it alone um and uh most directors uh fear to tread <laughs> down that down that path but um luca does actually a really nice job here uh for some reason i swear i saw a review of this that said it was like three hours long it's not three hours long it's over two but it's it's closer to two than it is three um and it is quite a lot about this relationship between Taylor Russell and she eventually meets up with Lee, um, played by Timothy Chalamet. And uh, they kind of bond. And, uh, you know, I mean, she's still learning how to be an eater, as they call him in this film. They don't use the phrase cannibal ever. Um, 
it's sort of like uh, that part in Twilight where they go, I know what you are. But instead of like vampire, they just use, use something else. They're just like, I, I know what you are. <sighs> Glitterazzi. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, cool. Uh, I mean, like they're trying to be different uh, and, and come up with something else. But, or like The Walking Dead, how the, the zombies are frequently for, referred to as walkers instead of zombies um yeah i guess that that's probably the better comparison um is that they're trying really hard not to use the term that everyone else is using uh to try to i guess, I guess humanize them um but it's they're can it's a cannibal movie um they eat people they eat people a couple times in the movie they eat people off camera too thank god um it's not <laughs> not everybody gets eaten on camera <laughs> Um, and they all kind of have their own codes in life, and we get to explore who they are as people, and I thought Luca, Luca actually did a really good job with this. I was sympathizing with characters I found it impossible initially to sympathize with, characters I was like, I'm not gonna like this character, I'm not gonna like this character, this is, there's no way. I, I'm watching a film full of people that I can't relate to, um... And you could say that that there's uh, an addiction angle here and that we're supposed to be able to relate to. Uh, you could swap out cannibalism for drugs. And would you, would you have the same film? Sure, probably. Um, and uh, maybe it's just an addiction and it's just a craving that they can't get rid of. Uh, and, you know, they could be vampires. And we watch vampires kill people all the time. And drink their blood. I watch zombies eat people's faces off. So is it really so unfair to say that I can't watch a film like this? That's That was the hype conversation I gave myself before watching Bones and All. Was, I watch all this other crap. Why would this be the thing? You know, why do I draw the line here? Um, when I watch humans in other forms eat other humans... Uh, why is it when they're human and they're not afflicted with anything necessarily, they're not vampires or werewolves or zombies, why does, why does that make it okay? And here it does not. So, um, I walked into Bones and All expecting to not like Bones and All, but Luca has a really well-written film. He wrote, uh, the, the script is tight, um, it doesn't really waste time, it's got, it moves interestingly about, um, it's not boring, I, I found some of his other stuff to be slow, I thought, um, Call Me By Your Name was a little bit slow and meandering, this, um, doesn't really meander so much, it kind of, it pauses at times, which is okay because you kind of need to breathe because of this film was constantly just eating people. But what it's trying to do is show you that these, uh, these characters, they like simple things too. They just want to exist and, um, in this life. And, uh, they run into other eaters. Supposedly they're able to, um, actually smell other eaters. Uh, which sometimes is a good thing because it brought uh, Taylor Russell and Timothy Chalamet together. Other times, perhaps not so good. Uh, Michael Schulberg is in this film, and he's fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> I'm just, just going to say, Michael Schulberg has, has really reinvented himself as being the go-to guy for bad guys, for villains. Um, I remember him back in, way back in A Serious Man, and he was just kind of the quiet, nerdy guy, and I thought maybe, like, that's what his career was going to be, and for some reason, for the most part, except for being, you know, the caring father in Call Me By Your Name, he has played a lot of, of bad guys, you know, on things like Dope Sick, um, and in uh, Your Honor, and here he is in this, he's playing, uh, maybe saying he's a bad guy is not necessarily, it, 
it's not that he does anything. He's so creepy, is the thing. It's not, it's hard to say that he's a bad guy, right? Um, because once you get past the scene, you realize that, I don't know, they really did anything. They didn't, he, he didn't, he didn't like bash Taylor Russell's head in or anything like that. He just, he's really creepy and he's totally okay with saying the things that he says. Um, and he's how we get the film's title, by the way. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, he is very, very creepy and effective in this film. Um, but so is Mark Rylance. Mark Rylance's performance is all over the place and it's great. Um, Timothy Chalamet was probably the least interesting thing about the film, only because his performance is just kind of, um, almost like the straight guy, like the straight man performance of the film. Um, I did appreciate the, the, the drawl that he has in this film, like the sort of country drawl, uh, as a country boy. I was like, ooh, Timothy Chalamet has got a sal solid country accent there. But, um, other than that, I think Taylor Russell is, you know, the breakout star of the film, and if you're gonna remember performances, you're either gonna be remember being terrified by Michael Stuhlbarg or Mark Rylance, so pick one. Um, the score here is amazing, it's Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Uh, I know nobody watched this film. That's why I didn't get a nomination. Because there's no reason... There's no way that the the score branch watched this film and didn't think, wow, score. You know? <laughs> like, um, they obviously just turned off. And that's the problem, is that I don't think this film was ever given a shot. Uh, and that's, that's just where we're at with cannibal films. You can't just put a cannibal film out there and expect people to go, yep, we, we embrace this for what it is. Um, the Academy is still very snobby when it comes to that kind of thing. And I think A24 found that out with, you know, them campaigning really hard for me and Goth for Pearl and trying to get Pearl in the conversation and it did not work out. Um, there are certain things that they just don't want to see. Uh, it, and, uh, they're just not going to embrace these horror films. So, um... Yeah, unfortunately, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's score and their original song to this film, uh, which were all stupendous, just some of the best of the year, that the song comes in at just the right moment um, and is beautiful. It's beautiful during a, a really horrifying moment, too. Um, it's such a contrast. There's this weird... <laughs> Um, there's this weird thing that I have to say, and I don't know where he got it, but, um, he's got them driving around in this truck, um, uh, Chalamet and, and, uh, Russell, and they're listening to something over the radio, and it's something, it's just like somebody, like, speaking, it's like talk radio, but it's really, like, kind of a creepy voice, and then it's interesting how he uses it, because there's a... Um, there's a part of it that makes so much sense for Bones and all, but it doesn't feel like the kind of thing that you would actually hear over the radio. <laughs> it's like, it's an audio book? Like, what is he listening to? Because it's something about, like, um, never getting used to the smell of, um, of burnt rubber, you know? And it kind of feels like there's some sort of parallel to the conversation the person's having just in the background, like over the radio for a few seconds to what is currently happening sort of in the film. Um, Luca makes a lot of great choices here. I gotta, I gotta be honest. And you don't understand what it is like for me to sit here and be telling you that I liked Bones and all because I was fully prepared to not like Bones and all. I heard from some people who didn't like it. Um... And it was, it's not my type of film. This is just not my type of film. And the fact that I ended up liking it is shocking. It's something I would not watch. If, uh, if I got my vision back tomorrow, I would never watch Bones at All again. Uh, never. Um, <laughs> I would never be curious to know what it looked like. Um, 
you could tell me the cinematography was great and I'd be like, I believe you. And then I would just move on with my life and I wouldn't want to see it. So I kind of understand why these branches are not um, getting into it. Uh, it's it's tough. Um, some of the scenes are, they're brutal. And when he, get, when he gets in there, it's not just a drama that, that, that happens to be about cannibals. No, it... It's a horror film, um, and uh, there's uh, definitely there at the end, uh, you will be reminded of the fact that it is, in fact, a horror film. Um, if you're not throughout, you know, any other scenes of the film. Anyway, the audio description from you is really weird. It's William Michael Redmond, and I love him. He's, like, my favorite narrator, and... <laughs> Um, he's commented on my stuff before, but there was something about, and you got to understand, like, I watch pretty much everything, um, I, I have very limited ways in which I watch most of the stuff, so I've typically watched other things before I watch the thing, before I watch something like this, so I'd already watched other things on my TV that had had audio description before I watched Bones at All in the same day, and as soon as I launched Bones at All, the first thing that I noticed was the odd um, quality to the to the uh, audio description track, and how it actually sounded like they gave William Michael Redmond a lisp. Um, it was very bizarre. It's also one of those things, sort of like I watched the show Tulsa King, which has just I don't know where they recorded that audio description, but it is not professionally recorded. You cannot convince me that that, that was professionally recorded. But it's sort of like, after a little while, you do kind of get used to the level of the recording. So, I would say after probably the first 20 minutes of the film, I didn't really notice it anymore. I become used to <laughs> his style. Um, but in every other film I've ever heard, uh, William Michael Redman talk, he's always really clear, and his voice is super crisp, and, uh, that's why he's one of my favorite narrators. I mean, you put him on a film like this, and it's, it actually, he somehow makes it better, because he, he's a very serious voice for a, a horror film. He, it kind of makes things sound a little bit creepier, you know, a little bit more unsettling. But, Right off the bat, when he was describing, like, the logos and stuff for everything, I could hear clearly something was up with the, the mixing. And uh, and it could just be the fact that I rented this on iTunes. It might just be how iTunes uploaded the audio description track, and maybe it was uh, not quite at its full uh, quality upload. You know, maybe it was reduced. It's a reduced quality upload. I don't know. But... Um, just a weird thing. Uh, it doesn't really factor into my overall score of the film. It's just something worth mentioning. If you happen to watch this off of iTunes, let me know, because I'm wondering if you noticed the same thing, uh, in the beginning. You'd have to be really familiar with, with his voice. Um, but then again, I guess not, because either you hear the lisp or you don't. You would just, if you weren't familiar with him, you wouldn't know that that wasn't what he normally sounds like. So, um, I guess it's time, time to grade my cannibal movie. Um, God. I'm gonna give Bones and All an A-. minus. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, it is... It's effective. It does exactly what it's supposed to do, and I think it's the best thing Luca Guadagnino's ever directed. So, I, you have to understand that I, I always say I walk into a film and I try to give it a fair shot. I walked into this film and I had I was not giving it a fair shot. This film, there was no way for me to give it to convince myself that this cannibal movie that I could come in evenly. I was coming in on the negative. I was coming in on the. I just wanted to kind of see Mark Rylance's performance. You know, he's nominated at the SAG Awards. I just kind of wanted to see how good he really was. That's, you know, the basis. 
and I ended up liking so much more of it, and it proved me wrong, um, and now I actually see um, the future in Luca Guadagnino and what he can bring to cinema, what he's able to do. Um, maybe this is his thing. Maybe I need to go back and watch Suspiria. Maybe I didn't like Call Me By Your Name because it's not a horror movie. Maybe Luca belongs in the horror genre. I don't know. Um, but I'm very surprised. That is not a grade I gave easily, but it's a fair grade. So, um, there you go. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe so I can continue talking to you about films with audio description. And I also have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acd.org. It'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who is narrating your favorite stuff. Or you can just look up William Michael Redmond and see all of the other things he's been directing, uh, narrating, because it's a, it's a lot. So, um, anyway, that's it for me today. Uh, bones and all. Yeah. Um, I will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side.